and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today, we will be discussing the problem minimum sum of absolute difference of pairs. In this problem, we are given two arrays A and B and they both have equal size. And the task is to pair each of the element of array A1 with the array A2. So basically what we need to do is we need to find a pair for each element of the array A and every ele and each element of B can't be used more than in one pair of A. Like suppose if we have one, two, and here we have two, three, then this two can't be used this here also, here also. This two can be consumed by only one number. So either we can have one, three, and two, two, or we can have one, two, and two, three. Okay, this is it. So now let us talk about the sample test case. So we are given the value of n as four. So what we can do is we can club the value of one with two. So one with two. And then what we can do is we can club the value of four with the value of three. Okay. Then the next value what we can do is we can club the value of 7 with the value of 5. And then we can club 8 with the value with 6. So let's talk about the absolute difference. So absolute difference here is 1. Absolute difference here is 1. Absolute difference here is 2. Absolute difference here is 2. This is four, 2 plus 2, 4. 4 plus 1, 5. 5 plus 1, 6. That is why the output to this is 6. Okay. So now. C. Suppose we have the numbers as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Here also the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Suppose we have this. Then what we can do is just try to think that with 1, what would be the most optimal one? The most optimal one would be itself because it would contribute 0 to the absolute difference and we want to minimize it. So the minimum contribution we can do is zero. Why? Because it is absolute. So we can't give negative contribution. Either it would be positive or zero. So let's try with the very small thing. It's positive or zero. Okay. So next we go to two and we find the same thing happening here also. Okay. That two is most suitable with the same. Number. Okay. Now what we can do is we can just remove this two and add here six. So here also you would observe that 1 with this value makes the perfect pair and this value and this value, say so 2 and 3, 3 would make the perfect pair and 3 and 4 would make the perfect pair. Okay. So now it can be thought of like this, that what we can do is if the number is small, then there is no point in taking a large number from the next array. Why? Because see, if this number is small, then a large number of that array would have a big difference between it. So what we can think of is, if we combine large values with large values and small values with small values, then the absolute difference would be very less. We can think of, so now we know that merge small with small. We can do that. And then we also know that merge big with the big. We know this also. So if we know this, let us take the sample test case again. Then according to what we have thought of, this one should be paired up with the smallest number of the next array P. So it should be paired up with two. And the largest number, which is 8, should be paired up with the largest number of B, that is 6. So 8 and 6. But what about the other number? Small can be done with small and large can be done with large. So same goes for the next small. Let's talk about the next small. What is the next small number? So next small number is here is 4. So next small number should be clubbed with the next small number because the smallest number has already taken the smallest number. So next smallest number, for the next smallest number, the optimal one would be the next one only. Because for C, for 1, we have the small numbers possible as 2, 3. Okay, so if we just have this here, 2. 2 is the most optimal one. Okay, so now let's talk about the next value, which is the second small, that is 4. For 4, 
the most optimal one would be the smallest. It might be the case. It might be the case. But the smallest one is already taken. So the next option available to us is the next value. We can have that. And by doing this, that C, first small, will be clubbed to first small. And next small would be clubbed with next small. So basically what we need to do is we need to club the consecutive values. Like first small, first small, last small, last small, second small, second small. So if we need the small or big at each point of time, then what we do? See, for each number, so for each number one, we would need to search the element first, smallest. So we found the minimum in the here is two. So at the next instant, what we would be doing is for the next value four, we would do, uh, we would replace two with a very large number. Okay, that is not possible. So what we can do is I would just show you the code also for this one. Suppose let's talk about the very small number. The very smallest number here is one. So for one, what we need to do is we need to find here the smallest. So we found that two is the smallest. So now what we would do is we would replace two with a very large value. Suppose it is 100 because 100 is not here. Okay, done, done. Then let's talk about the next smaller. It is 4. Again, we would try to traverse that and then we would find the smallest one. We again found the smallest one. So now the smallest is again made to 100 and 4 is clubbed with 3. 1 is clubbed with 2, the first one. Next for 8 also, we would again find the smallest one. This would be the smallest. We would replace it with 100 and we would say that yes. So the problem arises that each point of time, we need to find the smallest value at A also and the smallest value at B also. So that would be big O of N for selecting an element. And for selecting the next element, it would be again big O of N. Okay. So for one element, we are doing N square operation. First is finding that small element. Next is finding the consecutive one. So for n elements, what we need to do is we need to do n cube operation. But n cube is not possible. Okay. And we can do better than this. So what is a better solution to this? So at each point of time, we basically, what is the problem that is being created here? At each point of time, we want the minimum, the next minimum, the third minimum. So we can think of that this problem is a sorting problem. So what we can easily do is we can just sort it 1, 4, 7, 8. And here also we can sort it like 2, 3, 5, 6. And we can just start pairing up this number. This number would pair up to this number. This number would pair up to this number. And sorting has a time complexity of n log n. Okay, sorting has a time complexity of n log n, which is completely feasible and much better. Now for each, now after sorting both of the arrays, we would simply traverse from zero to the value n and we would start pairing up the values. Okay, so now let's move to the coding part and we would understand it much better. Now, let us move to the coding part. So first, I would make this as lowercase. Okay, fair enough. Now what I would do is I would simply sort both the arrays. So a dot begin, a dot begin comma a dot end itself and then we would do the same thing for b also b dot begin and then b dot end itself okay after doing both of this we would see we know that the absolute difference is to be there in long how because see the return type is long and the next is that if the numbers are Okay, even if it was not given, if this was not a function programming. So we can see that the numbers can be till 10 to the power 10. So if the first value is 0, if all the values of A is 0 and all the values of B is 9, so 10 to the power 9 into 10 to the power 5 is equals to 10 to the power 14. That is why we need a long long. So we would need a long long answer is equals to 0. And then we would start iterating over the array itself. So for int i is equal to 0, i is plus plus n, and i plus plus. And then we would say answer plus is equals to abs of a of i minus b of i. 
So this is just returning the absolute value of this, and this is answer. This is getting added to the answer. After this point, what we would do is we would return the value of answer. Just compile and run and see. And yes, we are getting correct output for the sample test case. Let's try to submit this. And yes, we got an AC. Let's talk about the time complexity also. Talking about the time complexity, this two sorting function is n log n. And this is just traversing over the array and doing constant operation. So the higher is n log n. And there is no other auxiliary array or something used. That is why we can say that yes, the space complexity is constant and time complexity is n log n. Now, if you were here till this point of the solution, consider liking the video and leaving a comment on the video so that the reach of this video could be increased. Thank you and have a nice day.